This is The Real Hustle. New recruits. The Hustlers are back, and this time they've brought in two new faces to help them with their scams. New recruits Polly and Jazz. They'll join original Hustlers Paul, Jess and Alex. Working together as a team, they'll carry out scams that are more cunning and devious than ever before. On tonight's show, ex-copper Rav Wilding gets a taste of the criminal life. I know you want to count it, but if it's all there, mate. Jess finally snaps. Snap it in the middle, but don't actually break it. No, hang on a minute. And these guys will never use free Wi-Fi again. I do feel violated almost. The marks in this show have no idea they're being hustled. They agreed the footage could be shown so that you can avoid falling for the same scams. The hustlers have invited celebrity friends to help them with their scams. They'll be thrown in at the deep end, no training and no practice, just straight in. Today's celebrity guest hustler is former police detective and presenter of Crime Watch, Rav Wilding. I don't know if I'd make a good hustler. I'd like to think I would because my time in the police, obviously I've seen a lot of people get um, hustled themselves for real. So I think I'd probably be able to do it, but until we put it to the test, I just don't know. I definitely think if I do hustle someone, I will feel guilty that I've done that to someone and that's what I'm, I'm actually dreading that. Rav has been told to go to a central London landmark and wait for instructions. Lucky for him, he brought an umbrella. Here comes Alex to fill him in. Come with me. How are you? Yeah, good. So, you've been a policeman, you present Crime Watch. What I'm going to do today is put you on the other side of the lawn. Okay. All right. So we're going to do a scam that was done in New Jersey a couple of years ago. It had the police fooled but it also had some of the criminal underworld fooled as to how it was done. I'm intrigued. You're intrigued? Yeah, bring it on. Let's go. <laughs> the good cop will have to turn bad cop in all that glitters. This is the Mark. He's on his way to a corporate office complex for a meeting. He's expecting to meet a PR manager who's selling off props from a major film shoot. And he's in no doubt that he's come to the right place because he walks straight into a press scrum. Susie, can you give us one look, please? It looks like some celebrity starlet is trying to avoid a prying photographer. Susie, this way. Thank you. Actually, nothing is quite what it seems. The starlet is Jess, the paparazzo is Jazz, and that chauffeur is Alex. The little scene has been staged purely for the Mark's benefit, who now thinks PR man Paul must be the real deal. I'm Rob, nice to meet you. Come on upstairs. Paul takes the Mark into the office building. They head upstairs to sort out the purchase he's here for. Going through. Don't let it fool you, we don't even have phones at work yet, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's all good. It's a new place, it's nice. As they settle in, Paul has some bad news. So, I'm right in saying you hear about the netbooks yeah. from the Indian production, probably. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have to tell you, I'm afraid they haven't arrived yet. So the Mark is here to buy a laptop that's being sold off, along with other props from a film shoot. The only problem is the laptop hasn't turned up yet. Well, I mean, I'd love to do something for you guys. I've got somebody coming in, but let's see. Maybe Paul can offer him another computer instead. There's a BBC production that's using Apple's computers, I mean, like that type of thing. Uh, won't be released for about a month or so. Before they can discuss alternate arrangements, another customer turns up. It's Rav, who's also here to buy something. Have you got a minute, Jack, or do I need yeah, to yeah. see you right now? Uh, I'm a bit early. Um, hang on. 
do you want to? Do you mind waiting for five minutes? Let me take no, care no. of this, and then we'll see what we can do for yeah, you. I don't really. I feel bad that you've come all this way. Um, just give me a couple of minutes. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Paul asks the Mark to wait outside while he deals with Rav. Rav is here to buy some jewellery, also left over from the film. Good news. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. They've sent double. It's 18 to 22 carat. I will need three for it. Not Rav and Paul talk loud enough for the Mark to overhear. I've got 15, Rob, you know that. And I'm going away in the morning. Well, you, I mean, can you get another 50 now? I mean... Not cash, I can't. Mm -hmm. Can you split it? No. But Paul has got more goods than Rav can afford to buy. If only there was someone else nearby with money in his pocket. Oh, I'll make some, who, yeah. who are these cages? Are they yours, are they? Uh, no, they've come and buy a couple of notebooks. Uh... What do you mean? I didn't well, let me ask him. I mean, I don't, it's him, not, yeah. you know, ask I'm not him. usually in the habit of asking guys to buy that right away. Um, you guys brought money for the netbooks. Yeah. Um, would you be interested in making a little money today? Well, probably double your cash, actually, if, you, if you're interested. It's probably nothing you want to keep, but you could sell it on by the end of the day. What do you think? Yeah, come on in, I'll tell you. Um, Jack, grab that chair over there for me, will you? Pull it over. Paul has a little business proposition for the mark. Even without that cheap laptop, he might be able to make this meeting worth his while. What we do at this company is we represent a lot of artists for press reasons, but what we also do is we represent productions. And Jack here is here to pick up something because it's a company that just made an Indian movie on the South Bank. They had a massive amount of gold, and so the excess is here. I've got double what I was expecting. What the prop manager has told me is it's 18 carat or better, which means it's very good gold. You can melt it, you'll make about four grand, but if you sell it wholesale, you could get about five for it. So if you've got 1,500, you're gonna make about a grand at least with it. If you're interested, if not, then I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do. I can't split it up, you see. I've gotta sell it all in one package and then give them the money. So Paul is offering some cut price gold left over from a film shoot, which could be a nice little earner for the mark. Have you got it? Do we have a look at it? Yeah, yeah let me go okay. get it, have a look at it. He goes off to get the jewellery, leaving Rav to persuade the Mark that he can trust PR man Paul. I've worked with him loads, he's alright. He's alright. Quite a bit. Yeah, loads. The cars especially. Really? Yeah, no, he's alright. He's, he's all legit, but like I said, he can't he can't take it to the jewellers because he's got to register himself and stuff, which he don't do. But um, let's have a look at it first. But obviously if you want to get it tested, it's fine. We'll just get someone in here. Get someone in here and test it. Yeah. Because then that way, I mean, it's my money as much as, as yours, so obviously I'm not going to put my money into it unless I know it's, you know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so um, that way, if it's genuine, and if they say what it's worth, if they say it's worth five grand, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Paul's back with the goods. It certainly looks like authentic gold. I can weigh it, but I would, I would highly recommend you test it. I think yeah, I mean, I'd, yeah, it you could sense. weigh it, wouldn't mean anything to me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. As nobody here is an expert in gold, maybe they should arrange for a professional to examine it. Paul helpfully supplies a local business directory. You guys want to bring somebody in? Yeah. Doesn't matter to me. What to do is have them invoice me. I'll take it out of my commission. Just yeah, take it's your pick. Why don't yeah. you choose who it is? So. We'll pay for them to come here and, and value that. Yeah, no problem. But we choose who it is. It's down to the Mark and his friends to arrange the test. That way, it's all above board. But will he really make that call? Just any goldsmith at all. A goldsmith would do, yeah. wouldn't yeah. He's picked up the phone book. Yeah, yeah. Tell you if you call He's got to be today, mate. If we get him over here this afternoon. I know I'm not doing anything after five. And he puts in a call to a jewellery company. Yeah, I'm looking if you've got... Six o'clock? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, six is fine, yeah. He arranges for a call-out appointment to test the quality of the gold later that afternoon. So, what's the name of the, the company? Uh, all right, I won't ask you to leave any cash just now. I'll just nah. trust you yeah. for it. Yeah. Fair <laughs> um, but these stay with me. All right, guys, listen, I don't want to chase you, but I need to get some lunch before the yeah, rest yeah. of it kicks off this afternoon. So, how will the hustlers separate this man from his money? They might be able to fool a layman, but they'll never fool a professional gold test. Or will they? When hustlers go out, they don't bring money, they bring prop bets. Challenges designed to win or lose a drink. But a proposition bet only has one rule, and that's that the hustler always wins.
Jess is out on the town and has made some new acquaintances. Someone is going to have to get the next round in, and Jess is going to make sure it's not her. I've got a challenge for you, okay. but I, I need you to help me set it up first, so you're going to help me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I? yeah. Okay, so I've got some cocktail sticks here. Yeah. Uh, now there's four of us, I need five, so I'll do two and you can all do one each if you don't mind. Three. There you go, there's one, two, three, four. And I've got five. Snap it in the middle, but don't actually break it, just like that. I want it to be as close to the middle as possible. So if you can all do that with your cocktail sticks, don't snap it completely in half. So if you just give me your cocktail sticks. Okay, so I've got five here. I'm going to put them all together to make like a ten-point star, like that. Now I'm going to pick one of you to do this. So I'm going to pick you. So the challenge is, I've got a ten-point star there. Without touching the cocktail sticks, I want you to turn that ten-point star into a five-point star. Now if you can do that, I will buy you a drink. If you can't do it, then you have to get around him for everyone. Great. Deal? Yeah, deal. <laughs> Excellent. So, to win a drink, Jess's new friends need to turn this ten-pointed star into a five-pointed star. The only thing is, they can't actually touch the toothpicks. Go for it. Without touching them? Yeah. Can you pull them? Um, if, if, if that's what you want to do, you can try it. Have a go. Have a go. It's, this is your challenge. You can do what you want without touching the cocktail sticks. OK. Go. I can't think of anything else to try, okay. so... OK, that's not a... Um, that, that's not a, a five-point star. No. I've only actually got three cocktail sticks left. You just blew them off the table. I didn't that, have any that's idea. fine. So I'm going to set these up. That's roughly how they were before, weren't they? Yeah. yeah. OK. Now, obviously, I said you couldn't touch them. I didn't say you couldn't use anything. Now, I'm not going to touch them, but I'm going to use a little bit of water. Oh, 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 oh I do love this bit when no he's way. doing it. <laughs> oh, I love this bit. <laughs> Come on. That's how you do it. It seems impossible, unless you know how. A couple of drops of water make the wood in the toothpaste swell up straightening them out to form a five-pointed star. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, I'll have a shot tonight. You OK? When you yeah, go? Oh, thanks. Go and then see you go. Hey. A bar in a trendy suburb of London. People are going about their business, enjoying drinks, relaxing, and using the free Wi-Fi network. But this customer is not off duty. It's new recruit Polly, and it looks like she's here on business. In Taking the Biscuit. This lady has just become her first mark. Hi there. Um, I wonder whether you could help me and do a bit of um, market research and do an online survey for me. It's just about like what you want to shop, you know, like what you buy and yeah. stuff. And basically, just you can put anything in your basket. You don't have to buy anything. You don't yeah. buy anything. But just, you know, have fun. And it's basically to see what people buy. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's all like yeah. that, really. Yeah. Yeah, Is that cool? Right. Yeah. Just gonna get this oh, fantastic. Okay. What's your email? Um, so Polly is carrying out some market research. She sends the mark an email with details of an internet survey. All the lady has to do is log in to a few online shopping and social networking sites, then fill out the survey, rating how user-friendly they are. Thanks, Lynn. Lovely. Okay. See you in a bit. Other people with laptops are also asked to take part. Twitter and just tweet that your heels are... Just reply to yeah. the email yeah. and just yeah. say how easy it is. <laughs> That'd be fantastic. Okay. All right. So, spend a few minutes browsing the internet, then fill in a few questions. What could possibly go wrong? After leaving the bar, the marks were shown some computer printouts. This is my uh, Hotmail account, which has all my, obviously, private emails in there. No, hang on a minute. That was on your Twitter, wasn't it? That was on my Twitter. Those printouts should look familiar, because they're of the web pages the marks had just logged into, using their confidential logins and passwords. But I'd be interested to know how you did that, because that is quite scary. So, what really just happened? No. Just replies to yeah. the email yeah. and just yeah. say how easy That'd be fantastic. Oh. Polly wasn't interested in market surveys. 
The hustlers were just trying to get the marks to visit sites that required them to log into private accounts. But even without the bogus survey, this scam can happen to anyone using open Wi-Fi anywhere. What the marks didn't notice was another computer user on the other side of the room. It was Jazz. And he was interested in just one thing. Cookies. A cookie is a computer file that's like a key for websites. When a user logs into an account, they provide their username and password. These details are often encrypted, so they're very hard for criminals to intercept. This is sent from their laptop to the Wi-Fi connection and then onto the website. But then, the website sends back a cookie that's saved onto the user's laptop. The cookie basically means the laptop has already logged in with the correct password and it doesn't need to log in again. But the cookie is normally unencrypted. Jazz was running a freely available piece of software that allowed him to make a copy of the cookie as it was being sent to the Mark's laptop. And once it was saved onto his computer, he could just visit the same site as the Mark and was allowed straight into their account. No login and no password required. I feel quite, what's the right word for it? I can't even think the right word, what's the right word? Violated almost, yeah. you know? So, it's not brilliant. <laughs> the hustlers just added items to the Mark's Amazon checkout baskets and used their Twitter accounts to post bogus tweets. I've just been scanned by the real hustle. <laughs> but if this had been a genuine criminal attack, the results could have been devastating. Criminals with access to your logged in accounts could potentially um, hijack your shopping session, add stuff to your shopping cart. Worst case scenario, if a criminal gets hold of your email account, for example, I mean, they could send any email in your name, they could instruct people to change your delivery addresses, set up bank accounts in your name. You think of your worst nightmare, they could at least get the ball rolling on that with your email. If you own a Wi-Fi device, you're probably always looking for a free hotspot. But remember, you could be sharing that hotspot with anyone. In this case, we've accessed a couple of low-risk websites, but real criminals could be eavesdropping on your most private conversations. Susie, can you give us one look, please? Earlier in the day, a Mark arrived at a PR company to buy a second-hand laptop. But his luck was out. Sorry, I'm afraid they haven't arrived yet. No way. Oh, Instead, guest hustler Rav offered the Mark the chance to join him in buying some gold at a rock bottom price. If you melt it, you'll make about four grand. But if you sell it wholesale, you could get about five for it. The Mark agreed to get the gold tested by a genuine jeweler. If it turns out to be high quality, he stands to make a nice little profit. But these stay with me. In All That Glitters, part two. It's early evening by the time the Mark and his mate return to the PR company offices. Paul brings them back upstairs and gets out the gold chains, ready for inspection. So you come from far? And right on time, here comes Rav, along with the jeweller. Um, I was going to have a look at this. All right, so this is what we've got. These are chains that... She's brought along a professional gold testing kit. It contains bottles of acid that are used to determine how many carrots or how pure the gold really is. Are you able to actually tell us whether it's 18 yeah, or 22? I can tell 18, 18, 18, 18, 18. Well, fake would be bad. Fake oh, <laughs> bad, yeah. <laughs> um, rather than check them all, which you're welcome to do, um, I would just pick whichever ones you want to test. If these chains are really 22 karat gold, as Paul has promised, they'll be worth thousands of pounds. Les, if you just want to pick a couple at, at random, just to check out. I'll bring in this one. Quite, that one? Quite thick and... Yeah, it's pretty thick and chunky, isn't it? Yeah. Start with that one. Right, guys, I'm going to start with a nine carat. Okay, so we've got a little acid solution here. Little tiny drops, all you need. First of all, if it goes green, turquoise, blue, it's fake. Right. If it doesn't show a colour, which this hasn't at all, and it means it's higher than nine carat. Mm -hmm. If this is cheap gold, the acid should make it change colour, but it stays the same. That means it's higher than nine carat, but that's still a long way from the 22 carats Paul has promised. Next solution test between 14 to 24. 
four carrots. Again, what you need to do. <laughs> and as you can see, there's no colour change on that at all. Yeah. What's well, so that one is? That indicates that it's 20. 24 carats. So that's even better. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well. So what's yeah. the value of that? The gold is worth even more than expected. No colour change means this isn't 22, but 24 carats. That's 99.9% .9 pure gold. Rav wants to test another chain, just to be sure. Do you have anything to compare the test with, by the way? The mark's still being cautious. Yeah, like a, a nine carat gold. Likely, we're not going to see one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I want to see one. I'm happy with those 24. Do you guys have a gold chain or anything? Nah, I don't wear jewellery. They'll have to rely on the jeweller's word. If there's no colour change again, this whole batch must be 24 karat gold. So again, that's the same grade of gold. Yeah, that would be 24's as high as it goes, right? Definitely. Yeah. That's yeah. as high as we can test. He takes a closer look to reassure himself. Oh, careful. careful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Job done. The jeweller packs away the kit and says her goodbyes. Thanks again. Bye-bye. Nice Thanks very much. Thanks for coming over. So what's really going on? Are the hustlers going to sell the mark pure gold at a fraction of the market price? That's yours. That's yours. Not a chance. Because those chains are anything but 24 karat gold. So how did they fool not just the mark, but also the gold tester? Well, that's where the other hustlers came in. Their roles didn't end with the paparazzi scramble earlier on. As the mark was getting the hard sell from Paul... 18 carat or better, which means it's very good gold. Jess and Jazz were waiting for their cue in a nearby hotel room. Listen, I'm absolutely fine. You guys want to bring somebody in? Yeah. It doesn't matter. The mark really did choose a genuine jeweller from the phone book. But the hustlers made a second appointment with the same company for mid-afternoon. Oh, hi. Nice to meet you. I'm Susie. Come in. Thanks for coming. Jess and Jazz also had some gold they wanted testing in their hotel room. Do you think it's changed colour? Yeah. But the hustlers weren't interested in getting a proper valuation. It was all an excuse for Jazz to get close enough to film the exact make and model of testing kit with a concealed camera. All right, I've got it, Polly. Right, this is the uh, gold kit she's using. Armed with this footage, the hustlers were able to pick out an identical test kit with exactly the same plastic bottles. Press this one, and empty this acid. They emptied out the acid and replaced it with water and a touch of food colouring to make it match. Even the cheapest gold won't change colour if you test it with water instead of acid. But how did those bottles get into the jeweller's hands? When she arrived at the office building that evening, she had to go through security. And the security guard just happened to be another hustler. I'm going to have to take you some security and have a quick look in your bags. It gave Alex an excuse to go through her bags. All he needed then was a little distraction. So what, what is this? It's a gold test kit. That's where Rav came in. Oh, hi, you here to test the gold? Yeah. Brilliant. Hi, I'm Jack. How you doing? Yeah, I'm Annabelle. Whilst he distracted the jeweller, Alex replaced the acid bottles with ones containing water. Well, I'm one of the ones that's, uh, that's called you to stay, so you're actually going to do us a big favour just to make sure everything's OK. Yeah, no. Upstairs, is that all right? Yeah, Brilliant. That all seems to be in order. I've put that back in. Oh, so. There you go. Brilliant, thanks a lot. Thank you. Rav took her upstairs. Despite all the trickery, the hustlers still weren't sure they'd be able to fool the jeweller. So Paul asked her to test the chains in private before the mark arrived. We were told it was 18 and above. It hasn't changed colour at all, which means that it's 24 colour. Right. Once he was sure he would get the result he needed, he asked her to wait until his potential customer returned and then repeat the test for his benefit. 
So now, it's down to business. Paul weighs out the chains to work out how much gold they're dealing with. What do we have there? We have 167. He checks the current market rate on the internet. That's what says 4,043.45. The chains are worth more than four grand at the scrap metal rate, but they'll be able to sell them for much more than that. If you guys want to go ahead, what I'll do is I'll split that into two halves. You guys get first choice. So if the mark buys half of the gold for 1,500 quid, he's guaranteed to make a very nice profit when he sells it on. Rav leads the way by getting his money out. Well, I'll you up. All right. I know you want to count it. If it's still there, mate. If it's off, you know you want the back. But will the mark also buy the jewellery from someone he's only just met? Yep. The hustlers have a sale. Perfect. The mark leaves, thinking he's made an excellent investment. In fact, those chains are worth tens, not thousands of pounds. He's about to find out that all that glitters is not 24 karat gold. Seeing the test, like all of a sudden it just, you know, I just thought, oh, well, there we go. I never clicked to think that, oh, it could just be water. Yeah. I don't know really now. Well, after witnessing both sides, I think I'll stick exactly where I was, on the right side of the law, and that is where I intend to stay. When I actually saw them handing over their own cash, it was awful, and it weren't 20 quid, we're talking a lot of money. I felt awful. When this scam first happened in America, it totally baffled the authorities. The only possible explanation was that the jeweler was in on it, but that wasn't the case. And this is what makes this scam work so well. The mark themselves can pick a jeweler that they trust and know to be genuine, and they will still lose their money. Just as in our case, the jeweler was real, the test was real, but the gold certainly wasn't. People should say to themselves, when I got up this morning, did I really mean to go out and buy gold chains or jewelry from a complete stranger? This was a really professional con, but underlying it was a deal that looked too good to be true, and it wasn't true. If you want to know more about how the show is made, go to bbc.co.uk slash real hustle. Next up on 3, we take an emotional journey to India for brand new The Truth About Child Brides. And tomorrow at 9, if I were Melissa, I'd be having some very stern words indeed with Harry on Don't Tell the Bride. In fact, I'd try my best to scare his socks off with a spooky dose of the fades. That's on Wednesday at 9. It's the least he deserves. Thank you.